It was a good trip to Minneapolis for the Maryland Terrapins. They take it 31-24 over the Golden Gophers. This is Wayne Viner. This is Mason, the intern Viner. Bruce is away from the microphone. Mason, boy, when it came down to winning the game, Maryland comes through. Yeah, it was a really interesting back-and-forth game today. But as you said, when it came down to winning time, this team still had the excessive juice. <laughs> Why do you like excessive juice so much? It's just become a Maryland mantra at this point, and I'm waiting for it to um, rival row the boat in a way. All right, so you're gonna, we're going to make excessive juice t-shirts to celebrate the win at Minnesota? I think, I think it's about time for that. I mean, it's getting a lot of press every time you saw... Um, I don't remember who, but hitting Antoine Brooks on the head with um, the with excess sign. with the sign. Yeah, number 26. I can't remember who that is. So the Terrapins run all over the Gophers. 47 rushes, 262 yards. Minnesota had the number one rush defense coming in. When you listen to the game, and we listen to the game, the TV called the game, they pointed out Maryland's talent. Do you think that talent's finally starting to come through, or is Minnesota a little overrated? Both was the case, but I could not believe hearing that Maryland was the more talented team in a Big Ten matchup. You don't get to hear that one much, but Ty Johnson has 18 carries for 130 yards and had a really good awareness play that you like to point out. So near the end of the first half, Maryland has the ball near midfield. They need to gain 15 yards or so to get in Darnstadter's range, and I really didn't think he had a 51-yarder in him, but we'll get to that. They go on a draw play. Ty Johnson uses up the clock 10 to 2 seconds and takes a knee, knowing that in college, when you get a first down, the clock stops. And then Maryland runs out there. Darn Statter hits a 51-yarder. I called it a one-iron when I was talking to Bruce, but it goes in. I thought they were going to put Adam Green out there. Why did you think they weren't going to change kickers? I Even though we got to see Darn Statter kick the ball a few times last week against UCF, it was just, you don't want to go back to Adam Green in that situation. For Just in my mind, there's just some reason why you don't want to do it. So you throw him out there and see if you can make it. There's two seconds left in the half. It doesn't hurt you that much if he misses. But he just he one-ironed it through, just pushed the ball straight through. And Maryland leads at the half 17-10. to 10. Minnesota had not given up a point in the second half, but of course Maryland comes out and wins the second half. So... Offense, Bortenschager did try to throw the ball downfield a little bit. Big catch was by D.J. Turner in the first half, probably the catch of the game. What do you think of Bortenschager as a quarterback? Because we sort of killed him after the game last week and on the Young Turfs podcast. Yeah, I, I did kill him on the podcast and in our post game. And Bruce put it in the way that Max Bortenschager looked like just a lot better in every way. And I have to agree with that. But there were some tip balls that against the Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, those are going back the other way. Oh, they are. Maryland was able to beat Minnesota. Minnesota was 3-0. and You said on the podcast, I said it on our pregame show on Turp Talk on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. Minnesota didn't really beat anybody. It came back to get them. But now that you've seen them play for real, what's your take on Minnesota? They're going to be good as far as their quarterback can take them. Rhoda had an up-and-down game, but he's an Alex Smith kind of quarterback. Just not going to make a huge mistake, but made some. Well, he made it through the two interceptions. Maryland's defense, I guess I'll call it a bit of a resurgence. For three games, they looked pretty good. That UCF game, not so much. Now, UCF could end up going undefeated. I know we're jumping around here a little bit. But UCF deserves to be ranked. They've only played three games, but they beat Memphis. Memphis beat UCLA last week. So UCF has beaten Maryland, Memphis, and FIU. Not too shabby. And, uh, well, UCF's a good team. Anybody who thought Maryland lost to a lower team, they didn't. UCF was good last week. If you take a look at this defense overall... Do you think we're big enough, strong enough, fast enough, all those qualities? I know we hit hard enough now to play with an Ohio State or Wisconsin. Not yet. Maybe Ohio State. You know, they're starting to get it together, but they're not still not all the way together back to their usual form. Wisconsin's always a tough team to beat because you only beat them if you're tougher than them. There's no 
for dangling your way out of beating their offense. It's a straight at you offense that has good tight ends and some playmakers outside and a quarterback that's not going to lose them the game. So what's your overall sense? What's your, your sort of feel of the game for the Terps? It's an interesting way to get to 31. You got to love winning games like this because we just didn't used to see it like this before. I expected Maryland to lose. Even though I knew they would win when I saw the game, I expected them to lose this game. I expect them to play well and lose the game. So I gave them a 49% chance to win the game on Wednesday. Nothing really changed that. Here's my takeaway. Maryland started the season with Pagrome, and everybody saw him last year and was sort of shaky. And he played pretty well in Texas until he blows his knee up. They bring in Kasim Hill, never played before. He was pretty good until he blew his knee up. They bring in Bortenschlager, who wasn't so good last week. He's pretty good today. It wasn't great. It wasn't Kasim Hill or Piggy, but it was pretty good. Walt Bell, whether you like him or not, or whether he's getting 500 yards or not, has had three quarterbacks in four games, and in the end, all of them were ready to play. you got to be doing something right to get three guys, which are different talents, and play football differently to win. So did I expect a 3-1 and one record? It was possible. I would have actually thought if you told me to be 3-1 and one before the season started, we would have lost to Texas and won the next three games. But I'll take 3-1 and because he can still get to 6 from here. That's the goal for this team. It has to be. But if you look at the paper, this game on paper, Maryland dominated most of the categories. Maryland did not turn the ball over in this game, which had to be a key coming into it. You didn't want... Borton Schlager to go out there and continue what happened last week, and they did a really good job on the first drive of doing that, even though it ends with a faked field goal attempt that was stopped on the one-yard line. Ryan Brand, I guess our guy at this point, comes in, and Mason said, hey, look, it's a different holder, and it was Ryan Brand, and he runs a fake field goal. I know a lot of people are upset in the Twitter world that we faked that, but it did give them the ball of one. We get the ball back because Minnesota can't advance the ball and we score a touchdown off of it. So in a long volley sort of tennis-like sequence, it did play up to Maryland's advantage and Bordy gets his, his first rushing touchdown there. Uh, defensively, Carter. Carter's making plays all over the place. So you got him in the good box. I, you know I think Antoine Brooks is a future pro. What do you think about number 25? What an aggressive player. Another one of these guys that we haven't seen at Maryland in a really long time. He's, his goal, even though he's a defensive back, linebacker hybrid, is to hit people. You throw the ball and he's a step behind, but he jumps on the guy and he hits him when the ball comes loose. And it's an incomplete pass. And I want to go back to that field goal that was stopped on the one. That means somebody in that coaching staff was doing their film because Rhoda could not advance the ball out of there. And you had to know that from looking at the film from last year's game where he was the starter and the Oregon State game, and they said it on TV broadcast too. He just can't make that play to make, move the ball there. And it worked in that one sense. In, a, in the long game, it worked for Maryland. Uh, it, I know we're, we're running up against the clock here. Let me throw one more thing in here. Maryland dominated the game. They win 31-24, and it took a, a late interception to seal the game by J.C. Jackson. You think Maryland should have won by more? Uh, you really just can't expect them to win by more, but watching the game, maybe three or so points more, but you are just got to be happy that they won this game after everybody slammed Maryland after what happened against UCF. And everyone possibly includes us. But this has been Wayne Viner. That is Mason, the intern Viner. You have been listening to the Viner Consulting Post Game Show. For your point of sale, networking, technology, website needs, Check out Viner Consulting. You can find them on the internet at www1, the number one, viner.com. That's V-I-E-N-E-R. Or 301-251-2900. Uh, we will be back live on 1300 CBS Sports Radio on Wednesday. Uh, Bruce will be away from the microphone. Mace and I will be doing the Coons Ford Terp Talk Show live in studio, and we'll get that up online as soon as we can. And, of course, we'll have videos from Coach Durkin's press conference, which is on Tuesday. Thanks for listening. Mason, final words. Well, Maryland won, and i got to be happy about that one. <laughs> and we are. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening.